So this here is uh, chicken meat. <laughs> it's the leftover from my lunch uh, from the previous day. And I'd like to put it under the microscope uh, to show you the structure of a muscle um, under the microscope. Hi, hello and welcome. Microbe Hunter here. Uh, Oliver is my name. And uh, I'm going to show you um, some of the structures that even the early microscopists of a few hundred years ago were able to see with their simple microscopes. And I think that their microscopes might not even have uh, been that simple, considering the fact uh, that the structures that I'm going to show you today are quite delicate and uh, and small. Well, if you want to put uh, some muscle under the microscope, you really have to make sure that you really pick it apart part properly and that you really um, put it into small pieces otherwise uh, you're not able to see the detailed structure so you have to really make sure that um, everything is uh, sufficiently small and then under the microscope um, at a low magnification that's what we see it's a little bit messy um, we are able to see the individual muscle fibers uh, but they're kind of torn apart uh, scattered all over the place that's that's okay um, and what we have to do is, is we have to look uh, much deeper um, into uh, the individual muscle cells um, uh, to see the different structures. Well, when I say muscle cells, um, it's quite interesting that the skeletal muscle, because that's what actually meat uh, is, it's a skeletal muscle, um, is actually um, these are long muscle fibers of many, many hundreds of cells fused together. Um, so you're, we're not able to see the individual cells, but actually these are simply long fibers. And in this case, uh, they're all ripped apart and torn apart uh, due to the processing that I've done under the microscope. But at a higher magnification, over here, we're able to see already a very typical characteristic uh, of uh, muscles, and that is, is the so-called striations. Skeletal muscles are also referred to as striated muscles because of those uh, strips, uh, stripes rather, that you're able to see here. And uh, these uh, striations are the light and the dark bands. They're actually called like that. And uh, later on in the video, I'm going to show you this, their significance and how they are actually um, important for contracting the muscle. Now, um, at different magnifications, um, you're able to see them differently well, uh, but later on, um, you also, if you want to see the real details of the striations, you have to use an electron microscope. And I was able to find online some images, uh, some public domain images of um, electron microscopic uh, pictures of those striations because they look uh, quite fascinating as well. Well, um, who discovered uh, those uh, first? Well, no, 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 no one less than Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, one of the first microscopists ever back in 1712. He wrote the following. Um, in these my observations, there appeared to, uh, to me a great many flesh particles surrounded with little figures like rings and very close to one another, just as if you should take a common iron wire and twist it about with another very fine one. So what he said is, is that um, he thought that these are kind of ring-like structures, um, almost like when you wrap um, an iron wire um, around a central core. Well, these are not um, ring-like uh, spiral-shaped structures, but rather indeed uh, light and dark bands that become um, visible because of overlapping um, protein fibers, uh, actin and myosin, which are responsible for contracting the muscle. I will explain this later. Well, um, in 1840, um, however, um, this is William Bauman. He's a very important uh, anatomist and microscopist um, at that time. And um, he also put uh, yeah, this uh, under the microscope and he said the following, um, a decisive characteristic of voluntary muscle consists of the existence and close arrangement of alternate light and dark lines discoverable only with by the microscope and of exquisite delicacy and finish taking a direction across the fasciculi fasciculi these are the basically the bundles of, of muscle fibers yeah, so he um, basically also laid down the foundation um, of further research here but it was only in, in the 20th century that the molecular mechanism of muscle contraction was actually um, uncovered um, and uh, the significance of those light and dark bands uh, became clear now, it was also Van Leeuwenhoek uh, himself who uh, put the muscle of um, a fly and also of a whale under the microscope. And at that time, he was kind of surprised to see that the structure is actually very similar. And he expected that uh, the muscles of a whale would actually be much larger. Um, at least uh, those light and dark bands would be much larger than those uh, um, of a fly, considering the fact that the whale is much larger. But this was not the case. <laughs> so this is also quite an interesting um, observation that uh, the, the body is shape um, of the organism um, yeah, can be different, but this, on the cellular level, um, the different organisms are indeed uh, quite, uh, quite similar. Now, um, I also tried uh, to make the structures more visible using methylene blue staining, uh, but uh, I have to tell you, <laughs> it did not make a lot of a difference. Uh, that's a step that you don't have to do, uh, but simply also wanted to share it uh, with you. Uh, yeah. 
blue is uh, of course a little bit more colorful makes it appear much nicer but in reality we do not see the structures much better or, or worse for that matter so it's in this, indeed a step that um, can be it's obsolete i would say but uh, in any case uh, methylene blue stain is a very popular staining mechanism as well yeah um over here this is now the promised uh, picture um open source picture let me move the arrow out of the way here um uh, open source picture of um, an electron microscopic image of those light and dark bands um, however i do have to explain this here a little bit um, um, as well what you have over here is this, uh, this uh, gray area here that is the dark band and this here is the light band okay and uh, just ignore this very dark almost black line in the center it's called the z line or z line yeah and uh, one contractile unit is uh, from this z line or z line to z line yeah, so you see there is a dark band, a light band, a dark band, and under the electron microscope, we're able to see them as these alternate uh, striations. Now, because I'm not able to zoom in yet further with uh, my light microscope, I, I decided uh, to show you a little paper model here of actually what happens. Um, of course, uh, sometimes uh, models uh, are a little bit very simplistic, but uh, actually in order to understand what's going on here, it's uh, um, quite uh, quite revealing. So what you have here is, is you have two different types of protein fibers. Uh, those dark ones here, it's uh, referred to as myosin, and those uh, white ones that I made here are is actin. And these are filamentous proteins. And, and uh, this is one contractile unit. And what you have over here, it's a sarcomere. So what you have is, is you have over here a light area, a light band, and you have the where the myosin is, is you've got a dark band, and then you've got a other light band and those sarcomeres are repeated uh, a long a lot of times i don't know many million times maybe um, and they make up the yeah basically the it can be found inside um, uh, the muscle cell and when a muscle now contracts what happens is that those fibers they slide together okay and uh, you see that um, the light bands oops now i messed it up a little bit and you see that the light bands what they do is, is uh, they become smaller right and but the dark bands uh, remains the same in size and this is how muscle contracts okay yeah so the, it's the uh, actin and myosin fibers uh, sliding past each other yeah, so the muscle is now relaxed and then when it contracts uh, then um yeah the light bands become smaller. I think a paper model <laughs> is a little bit also delicate here, uh, but I think, uh, I hope that you, you get the point here. Yeah, so uh, what is uh, so fascinating for me is, is that uh, um, even back uh, in the early days, 1700s, 1800s, even though their microscopes were so much uh, simpler, of course, um, that uh, the scientists were still able to make very important discoveries. And if you have a microscope at home, you can also try this um, and test your own microscope a little bit. You need to have a magnification of at least 400 times uh, to be able to see those light and dark bands, those little stripes, those little striations. Um, and uh, um, yeah, if you have your microscope has a condenser, make sure that you close the condenser all the way. Um, and what I've done here in, in this uh, video here, I also increased the contrast a little bit because sometimes those light and dark bands can be a little bit difficult to see and to make sure that the muscle fibers that you look at um, are really completely separated from each other. If you have uh, some several cells uh, stacked on top of each each other it's very very difficult to see uh, those uh, striations well i hope that you liked the video um yeah always uh, new things uh, to discover um, i wish you all the best and uh, happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye